Good day and welcome back to Chess History. I am Daniel van Ikker and today we will be covering Lesson 8, which is the final installment in the Chess History series. This lesson delves into the modern missionary movement in Africa spanning from 1900 to the present day. The events of the 20s and 21st century can be divided into three periods, the early 20th century, the post-independent period and the era after the year 2000. The lesson will examine various regions of North and Sub-Saharan Africa and how events impacted the growth of the Christian Church. The early 20th century was an extension of the late 19th century, which we've covered in the previous lesson. External events such as the two world wars in Europe, which weakened the European colonial influence in Africa, largely shaped this era. We will first look at the surviving Christian Berber community in the Muslim-controlled Marib region of Africa, then at the church in South Sudan, which is a remnant of the old Nubian church, and finally at the emergence of African-initiated churches. Berber Christians, also known as Kabbals of Amazigh Christians, are a small but distinct indigenous Christian community found in Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia and Libya. These communities are mostly found in rural areas such as Morocco's Atlas Mountains and Libya's Nafusa Mountains. The French colonial rule of the Maghreb started around 1840 and lasted until 1962. During this period, the Catholic Church supported the Berber Christian community with schools and Christian education. This led to the abandonment of some of the traditional Berber lifestyles in favor of European customs and norms. During Sudan's colonial era, the Christian missionaries spread the faith and facilitated the growth of the church. However, the civil wars that resulted in death and displacement hindered this growth. The establishment of European missions in Africa created a European-based Christian landscape. However, the conversion to Christianity did not diminish the desire of Africans to maintain their own cultural identity separate from European influence. African communities sought to reclaim control over their religious practice and belief, leading to the formation of African-initiated churches. These churches reflect African cultures and beliefs and serve as a platform for autonomous religious expression. The leaders of these churches, often referred to as prophets or apostles, were quite often the respected members of the community with a thorough understanding of local cultures and beliefs. The Zion Christian Church is one of the largest and most influential African-initiated churches in Southern Africa. The church was established in South Africa in the early 20th century. The church has grown to become one of the largest churches in Southern Africa, having a significant impact on the region's religious and cultural life. To sum up this era, the 19th and early 20th century established a strong Christian foundation in Southern Africa laying the groundwork for continued growth and development in the years to come. In the post-independent era, various African governments have been founded, each with different impact on the growth of the church in their particular regions. Some have hampered the growth, while others have facilitated it. We will look at the impact on the small Christian Berber community, the charismatic renewal movement, liberation theology, religious extremism, and the significance of the ecumenical movement in Africa. Following independence, the Berber Christians faced political repression and economic inequality at the hands of Muslim governments that replaced European rule. Moroccan and Algerian governments actively sought to suppress Berber culture and religion, but despite it, their numbers began to grow. In Africa, charismatic renewal movement have gained widespread population within Christian communities. These organizations place a strong emphasis on the Holy Spirit, prayer and spiritual healing. They are marked by their vibrant worship, adherence to biblical teachings and the emphasis on addressing social and economic issues. The Liberation Theology Movement has been a powerful force in the promoting social and economic justice. The Kairos document in South Africa's Dutch Reformed Church, the Ecumenical Association of Third World Theologians, and the Institute of Contextual Theology are all examples of this movement. 
These organizations have provided theological education and training to African clergy and lay leaders, and they continue to be strong advocates for liberation theology that address poverty, oppression, and inequality. Unfortunately, religious extremism and violence have increased in Africa, threatening Christian communities as well as the continent's stability and security. Boko Haram in Nigeria, El Shabaab in Somalia, Al Qaeda in the Maghreb, and the Lord Resistance Army in Uganda are all examples of this. These groups have caused significant casualties and widespread displacement. The rise of Islam as a state religion in some African countries has resulted in the exclusion and persecution of Christians. Christians in Sudan, Nigeria, Egypt and Eritrea have faced discrimination and violence as a result of their beliefs. Finally, the African ecumenical movement encouraged unity, cooperation and mutual understanding among Christians of various denominations. This includes interfaith worship and prayer services, Bible studies and theological discussions, social and humanitarian projects, advocacy and peace-building activities, and the training and capacity-building programs. These activities aim to increase Christians' understanding of their faith, to solve social and humanitarian issues, to promote justice and peace, and to bolster leadership abilities. In Zambia, the main Protestant churches merged in 1965 to form the United Church of Zambia. The Seven Days Adventists play an important role in the Zambian independence movement and establish in this way a wide footprint in the country. In conclusion, the post-independent era brought newfound independence to the African Church, but was also characterized by extremism that hindered its growth in many regions, where the late 19th and early 20th century placed a strong emphasis on the Gospel. The role of the Church changed during this period to has a more humanitarian role. The dawn of the new century marked a period of change and transformation. We will look how the Christian Berbers stepped up for their minority rights, how the rise of independent movement resulted in division and conflict in South Sudan, and how a diaspora for a better life impacted the growth of the Church. The Berber Christians in North Africa have faced new challenges since the year 2000 including the rise of radical extremism and religious violence in some parts of the region. Despite these challenges, however, multiple Berber Christians have joined effort to promote cultural and religious tolerance and understanding as well as to safeguard the rights of minority communities in the region. As previously mentioned, the civil wars plagued Sudan for much of its history. The 2005 peace agreement put an official end to these wars. In 2011, citizens of the South participated in a referendum in which they voted in favour of independence resulting in the formation of the Republic of South Sudan. The establishment of South Sudan was viewed by many as a victory, but it also brought about new religious tension as some of the members of the Christian community sought to assert their dominance in a new state, causing friction. The migration of African Christians to other nations has resulted in the formation of diaspora communities, which now constitutes a significant portion of the global Christian Church. Ethiopian, Nigerian, Eritrean and South Sudanese Christians are examples of African communities that have formed abroad, preserving cultural and religious traditions and playing a significant role within their respective global churches. The status of the church in the African countries where a lot of missionary work was performed during the 19th and early 20th centuries is as follows. In Malawi and Zambia, the Roman Catholic Church has the most followers. Not only Protestant and African-initiated churches are thriving, but also many cults. In Tanzania, the Pentecostalism is growing steadily. Uganda is currently very open to Christianity and is the destination of many mission trips. Kenya and South Africa is regarded as the most Christianized of all the African countries. This year I witnessed challenges for Berber Christian, the church in South Sudan, and the African Christian diaspora. Despite adversary, they show resilience and determination. They work to promote cultural and religious tolerance, protecting minority rights, and preserve their cultural heritage. 
These efforts contribute significantly to the global Christian community and promote peace and justice. The Church in Africa underwent significant changes in the 20th and 21st century. European missionaries arrived in the 19th and early 20th century to spread Christianity, but many succumbed to illness such as malaria. Eventually, the African Church matured and established its own growth through African-initiated churches. However, Christian communities in Muslim-controlled regions still face suppression, leading to a new battle for minority rights. We have reached the end of Lesson 8 and the Church History Series. I trust that it provided valuable insight and deepened your understanding of the Church's development over the years. Enjoy your day.